Hello everyone, we are today at the Panzermuseum Munster and this is Tobias, a former Leopard 2A6 gunner. And we got a question from Budja, who is a German combat engineer currently fighting in Ukraine. And he basically noted that in his impression, they got delivered there are some regular high explosive, simple high explosive ammunition, and for him it seems eff more efficient than the kind of multi purpose ammunition that was used. So, like the multi-purpose ammunition in this case would be a heat round and heat means high explosive anti-tank and here you can see this this is the high explosive part and this is basically a hollow charge or a shape charge which when it hits here basically it turns into a, a, a spike that, that penetrates the armor very fast but since there's also a high explosive component you can also use it against soft targets this is basically the same like a Panzerfaust in the Second World War was, uh, was, was designed. And also you could use the Panzerfaust against soft targets or like you, you hit a bunker with it or something or a light field fortification. And of course you have, it's not as effective and efficient like a complete high explosive round. But you were a Leopard 2 gunner, so you probably know more about this. Yes, the thing is, at least for the German army, the main ammunition for a very long time was the APFSDS, or in German it's called Kinetic Energy Round. That's, this one is basically a dart to engage armored targets, and then this for basically any other target. But now there's high explosive rounds, and there are two basic kinds of um, uh, explosive rounds. It's the dump, let's call it dump, that's the easy one, that has no special fusing mechanism and there's the modern one. The modern ones have airburst capabilities, delayed fuse capabilities and the big improvement is to these heat rounds that you have like a designated um, sharpness into it. So you don't have only the the mantlet that will cause uh, yeah. sharpness but you have also like a tiny balls of tungsten that will cause greater effect on the target. And the thing is that these high explosive rounds and especially the modern ones, these more expensive ones that are not very high expensive compared to the cheaper ones, they inflict better effect on target out of various reasons. Because a high explosive, you know, an explosion getting triggered on the target, majority of the explosive energy will go to the outside. It actually don't go inside the target. And if you want to destroy, for example, field fortifications where soldiers are hiding in it, you want to penetrate it. You want the explosion inside of it. And uh, with this uh, kinetic energy round, it will go through it. You will have no effect inside the target. With this, you have like only this small jet going through it. But with the delayed fuse that you can select, you get actually a penetration and you would get the explosion inside to deal with targets inside of uh, buildings, bunkers and stuff like this. And the other thing that is very important is the Airbus capabilities that you can actually engage targets that you can't directly fire at. For example, in trenches or behind covers, that you can laser next to them, aim above them, fire them, and you will get the explosion above them and the sharp nails that are de designed for it will cause uh, damage to them. So you have these cheaper high explosive rounds that have only the impact one, so it has the only plus sizes that is cheap, but on the other hand, you need more ammunition count to achieve the result that you can get with one shot with the expensive one. And uh, don't forget that a lot of the situations, you only want to get one shot at the enemy because when you fire two or three rounds, you're exposing yourself, the enemy knows where you are. Even maybe you're suppressing your current target, but someone else can maybe sneak onto you and engage you. But when you need only one round, for example, a high explosive round that will go into this wooden bunker, will destroy it definitely because when it goes in it will destroy everything inside and it don't go out the explosion that you will receive greater success and I think we saw a similar situation with the uh, when artillery ammunition got put into it uh, with this airburst capabilities we had in the beginning of the history had only impact artillery then comes like this uh, artillery that was specially used to explode on treetop levels to cause sharpness from the trees and uh, causing damage. Or also you made a video about the Stux using high explosive on the ground to get the airburst. Ah, yeah, yeah, the apparatus and the ricochet firing. Yes. And so with this kind of ammunition, you get this directly yeah. without even doing anything. So basically, if you, if, a, if you have artillery that directly hits the ground, a lot of energy goes into the ground and not in the shrapnel round. And for high explosive ammunition, generally, 
With this one, there's, there's a difference, but with general high explosive ammunition, you do two kinds of damage. There's the blast effect, and then there's the shrapnel. And where you particularly see this is with hand grenades from in the Second World War, for instance, the German, they used basically a hand grenade without shrapnel. So it was only the blast effect, but the blast effect takes off very, you have to be very close. And if you add shrapnel, the distance that deadly force is provided is way bigger. Now the combat engineer has another question because he encountered a lot of indirect fire and that tanks and nearly every weapon system over there, so over there on the Ukrainian Russian front is basically used in an indirect fire capability. Were you in any way trained on the Leopard 2 to provide indirect fire? No. You have to know that the Russian vehicles that are doing it, they are purposely designed for it, especially the older ones like T-55. So we have in the Western the doctrine that this fire support is given clearly by the self-propelled uh, guns like the Krab like the Panzer Bitte 2000, like the Paladin. You have all these systems, Caesar, getting delivered. And we see that many countries are delivering artillery systems to Ukraine because of this reason. And uh, the Russians are using their tanks for this. Of course, the Ukrainians lived with the Soviet doctrine for very long. That's why they probably also employ these tactics, especially with the T-64. It was also trained with the T-64 to do these tactics. But that's not a thing with uh, NATO countries to do it on a same degree like on Eastern Bloc countries it's going on. And uh, with this modern high explosive, you need a direct line of sight because you need to laser it to program actually the high explosive rounds, for example, to get uh, the airburst. And uh, when you don't have a direct line of sight, it's, I would rather say it's a wasting of ammunition. And especially with this costly ammunition, you can employ them better in a direct fire role. And in this direct fire role, this more expensive high explosion is very, very effective compared to the dump one that it will improve situations. And, and of course in Ukraine, they now use generally the combination of drones for basically fire correction and observation that they find out, okay, there's a drop of the shell, combined often with, with fire um, control algorithms on, on, or not algorithm, software to correct the, the data as well because they have some where you put in, okay, you have basically, back then you had firing tables like in the Second World War for, for an artillery gun, like at this wind, uh, at, at this temperature, at this distance, you use this and now of course, well, you could use an Excel sheet, but generally you just type it in in your app on a phone or something and then correct this and you say, okay, I have this ammunition and all the order values. I mean, it depends on the complexity, but sometimes even the heat of the barrel is important and of course the wind the, the temperature of the air and, and of course also the different types of ammunition. Because sometimes, yeah, ammunition, you have, you can use different ammunition for the same gun in, in some cases, for instance for mortars, because I think he specifically mentioned the, no, and then the newer mortar team and they had, I think, from one country the mortar and from another the ammunition. And then they were able, for instance, to destroy a T-72 with 120 millimeter mortar in indirect fire. Did you have any special training or doctrine on how to engage um, field fortifications? Field fortifications, getting engaged with the high explosive one, at least with the high explosive got introduced. So this would, would be that one? In, that in the early times, yes, with the Leopard 2 A6, A5 and A4, what Germany used previously, it was this MZ round or heat FS round that was used. But now with the introducing of the high explosive round, the high explosive round is to replace completely like the heat because it gives so many advantages and uh, the shaped charge that was the, designed in the first place to engage armored targets. Yeah. But currently the armored targets are employing different kinds of armors like ERA, explosive reactive armor that's protecting the tanks. You have composite armor, you have spaced armor. And these developments were made to deal against heat FS. So heat FS is currently not that effective anymore against main battle tanks that you only use the APFSDS. So you don't need this function. And instead of this, we have now like the shrapnel and the new fusing system to extremely increase the effect. And the thing is that you can deal with, well, like I said, that you see often these videos where a tank drives forward, starts shooting three, four rounds, then he drives backwards, comes forward again, because maybe he didn't receive the result in the target how he wanted. 
but he's exposing himself, and especially these Russian tanks with this, uh, and even the T-64, the Ukrainian design of the tank, has a slow reverse gear. So y you have to get out, get in, get out, and it will take time, it will risk your tank, and the Leopard 2 can drive in with like 60 kilometers per hour, can take one or two rounds with high explosive, back off, and he will receive much greater results in the against the field fortification, either with the airburst from the top that you like put the sharpness into the trenches, or you will have this penetrating effect of the delayed fuse that it will explode inside. Okay, then thank you very much. Thank you to the Panzermuseum Munster for inviting us. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.